Hi, everyone. He thought we should do a poster that 
with a deal to college uh, uh, drug. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, so we did three posts on Fantasia. This reissue, and this was the one for the kids, you know, you know, under 10 years old. And the next one was, we had a little bit of horror for a young teenager kind of approach. And then the third approach was the <laughs> <a> college approach. <laughs> the, uh, Studio, the studio executives at the time said, now this college approach, we did not you know, want to use Mickey Mouse at all. Yeah. Well, I said, that, I'm not going to do anything for Disney Studios that doesn't have Mickey Mouse in it. So I hid Mickey Mouse in this poster. If anybody can see it, I don't know. It's very subtle on the left hand side. <laughs> Not that the studio executive has ever spotted it. <laughs> 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 and this is a, a, a more modernized version of Sleeping Beauty. Now this is the one secretaries in the uh, offices of Disney looked at this poster and said, ooh, that wolf is giving me the evil eye. <laughs> well, at the end of the studio, Ron Miller heard that and said, destroy everything. Oh, no. He's superstitious or something, so that, everything got destroyed and then rejected, and then we did the, the final campaign look like the next slide. Was pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> This is a kind of a 20th Century Fox movie, which really had a Kansas, Kansas City connection. Uh, Frank Barheit wrote the script, and he was a uh, classmate of mine at Shawnee Mission East. And Robert Altman, director, who was in Kansas City origin, and then for me, I did design the poster. So, kind of a trifecta of Kansas City. <laughs> I 
doing a lot of work with Alfred Hitchcock in, uh, see, this would be 1966. If, uh, he was not, Hitchcock was just not happy at all with the uh, campaign that other artists had come up with for the movie Torn Curtain with Paul and the with Julie Andrews. <coughs> so, uh, Lou Wasserman had a Universal Cities called me up and said, can you give us a whole new campaign by tomorrow morning? <laughs> so my friend, my artist, my friend, friend of mine and myself, we worked like all night until from six in the, in the afternoon until nine thirty the next morning, and uh, we brought it into Hitchcock. He loved it, and so uh, Hitchcock became uh, just such a friend. And I worked on his last five movies, and. Uh, but this was just this was a retrospective campaign of about ten of his films. We would use this as a basis and then sort of different film. And, uh, and this was his last movie, Hitchcock's last movie. Uh, I was always impressed by the women around Alfred Hitchcock. His his wife Alma was just so smart, so impressive. Uh, his daughter Pat was really terrific. And uh, he had a secretary that was a genius, uh, Sue Gautier. His secretary was amazing. We'd, almost every Monday morning, we'd work the New York Times Crossword Puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so, he was something else. This was just an idea I had for play Misty for me, and uh, it was rejected by Glenn and so on. And this is the poster I did for uh, Dirty Harry for Warner Brothers, and this, this is one of my favorites, but it was all done photographically, except for that little drawing down below. And even then, I worked on a lot of uh, drive-in type movies, like uh, this was called Werewolf on Wheels. <laughs> Got your mind, motorcycle crowd, you get your sex crowd, you get your devil worshippers, your werewolves, everything at once. <laughs> By the way, any, any questions anytime on the phone? I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Okay. Uh, this jaw, uh, jaws I've worked on for two years. In 1974, when Universal Studios bought the rights to uh, Jaws from Peter Benchley, they wanted to immediately uh, put out an ad in all the trade publications like Variety and Hollywood Reporter and uh, to reach all movie theater orders and everything. And this is, again, an all-night project that they wanted immediately. They wanted, so this is the first piece of art created for Jaws. And the copy we use is something like Universal Studios just bought the rights to the movie Jaws. And then when you start, you start coming, trying to come up with ideas for movies, you start out with a bunch of pencil sketches. And this is one of the, one of the pencil sketches. And then after you do hundreds of these, the hundreds of these types of sketches, uh, then they want to see, well, I, let's take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, um, a little, little more of this, and then let's do some color sketches. So then, let's, <laughs> well, yeah, these are just sketches that are all rejected. <laughs> you, you get paid, you get paid if it's rejected. Sir, yes, I'm sorry. Do you get paid even if your work is rejected? Thank goodness. <laughs> I, I've had more art rejected than accepted in my life. <laughs> this is the watercolor sketch. I always like that. Yeah, well, of course, the girl, the girl in the movie was nude, so we did, we did a 
the photo drawings and everything. And when we kind of finally got to the finished piece of art, none of the newspapers would take it. So we had to add bubbles and everything around the girls. <laughs> Little wrote and 
directed this movie called Slither, Science Fiction, and uh, I ended up doing the ads for the movie. California, this is a piece of art I did for the, the Jayhawk uh, alumni in California who put on t shirts and things. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like them all actually, but uh, yeah, art color is good. I like that. It's the hardest. Yeah. Oh, uh, she wanted to know what my favorite media was, and uh, Brandon was at the, at the Oak Park Mall yesterday, and he saw this shirt in H&M. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Star Wars, uh, which is the, uh, I did a lot of work on the first three movies, and it's kind of a, a whole uh, speech um, in itself, the uh, Star Wars thing. Sir? Yes? You, I guess I'm on this Star Wars Yeah. <laughs>